at the uh, the present time. Both astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen have their helmets on. Uh, John Young uh, just about to get into the orbiter. Looks like he was gesturing. Uh, is it okay? And yes, it is okay. He is crawling through the doorway now into the orbiter. We'll be walking along the uh, the platforms, which are really along the, the back wall of the crew compartment, and moving up to his seat. Uh, Pilot Bob Crippen gives a little wave uh, to the closeout crew in the white room, which won't be able to follow him in there. Part of that crew, though, is inside. Astronaut Lauren Shriver, who's one of the support astronauts, uh, helping with the ingress. Uh, they are inside of the orbiter now and uh, getting ready to get into their seats. Uh, swinging up into those seats, which of course are lying in a horizontal position rather than a, uh, a vertical position that seats normally are in, is not uh, the easiest thing to do. They have a, uh, just a couple of little toe holds and hand holds and they swing themselves up into there. And the next step will be the connection of their biomedical sensors, uh, their headsets uh, to the comm side of the uh, uh, circuits, and their life support systems to the, uh, the air side. They use a uh, sort of a normal breathing mixture of air, uh, unlike the pure oxygen that was used during the previous manned spaceflight programs. So astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen are on board, everything going very smoothly as we move toward pickup of the countdown at the T-minus two hour and five minute point. This is shuttle launch control. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control. The clock has started at, we're at T-minus two hours, four minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. Astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen uh, being placed in their suit. The white room crew is in the process of uh, wiping down the, the hatchway, which will be closed up to ensure that they get the absolutely best uh, seal that they can there. Uh, later on, that uh, cabin will be pressurized, the seals will be checked to and checked uh, for integrity to ensure that uh, they are holding properly for the flight. One of the first things that happens here as we once more begin the count is that the main propulsion system helium tanks will be brought up to their flight pressure of 4,400 pounds per square inch. Everything going smoothly, the leather, weather looking good, uh, all aspects of the shuttle looking good as we prepare for a liftoff at 7 a.m. this morning. We're the countdown at T minus two hours, three minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus one hour, 58 minutes, and counting. 
a little bit of chatter occurring as the crew hooks up their comm uh, equipment to the orbiter and begins to talk with the, the people that they need to do their checks with. Drivers coming on. The, one of the first things that was said uh, was by the orbiter test conductor for Rockwell, Chuck Hannon, who said that we hope we give you a better show tonight. And uh, Bob Crippen came back and uh, said we hope we uh, give you a better show. Uh, they also were told that uh, they hope they didn't mind stale sandwiches, that they hadn't had a chance to change out the box lunches which are on board. Uh, astronaut Crippen said, we've brought along a new turkey sandwich. Everything going smoothly uh, as we go through the steps necessary to get us to a launch at 7 a.m. this morning. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 43 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. At the present time, the cabin leak check is in work and apparently proceeding along satisfactorily. That is not completed until approximately the T-minus 30-minute point in the countdown. The closeout crew is finishing up the, the work which they need to do at the level uh, of the hatch that gives access to the astronauts, and then the they will prepare the swing arm to be moved back at the T-minus seven minute point in the countdown. The only other arm which has to be moved prior to liftoff is what's called the Gox vent arm or beanie cap. Uh, this is used for uh, gaseous nitrogen, uh, which is uh, sprayed on the, uh, the very top of the external tank to try and prevent any buildup of ice at that point where the liquid hydrogen vents, uh, liquid oxygen vents from the external tank. Both of those tanks have been at their flight mass uh, for some time now and in the replenish mode where we add just enough to the tanks to keep them at the proper level as some of them uh, of the liquids uh, boil away. Uh, this is just natural that they should boil away because of the very, very cold temperatures of them. Liquid Hydrogen, for instance, boils at minus 423 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. At the present time, the closeout crew up in the, uh, the orbiter access arm uh, is making sure that the thermal protection system uh, is in the proper configuration there. They have to actually screw some plugs into it, uh, which are threaded uh, into the, the TPS, which is on that hatchway. Uh, and was put on here in the orbiter processing facility uh, just several months ago. At the present time, everything moving along very smoothly in our countdown. The uh, booster test conductor has uh, asked to calibrate the solid rocket motor pressure transducers. These are the instruments which are necessary to provide the information which separates the solid boosters during the flight uh, once they have burned out. So it's essential that those pressure transducers be working properly to prevent any premature separation. The pre-flight alignment of the inertial measurement unit is underway, and that will be completed at the end of the 20-minute build-in hold, which comes up at the T-minus 20-minute point. The range safety officer has reported that the Eastern Test Range Command Test is complete.